Uh, what is happening everybody? Welcome to another episode of Goose's Gaming Tutorials. Today we're going to be tackling quite a difficult one. It's going to be Escape from Tarkov. Now I don't know if there is a such thing as just the basics of Tarkov, but I'm going to give it a good crack. We're trying to smash this out. Keep it short, keep it sharp, keep it sweet. You know the drill. Now in this instance, I am going to jump into the uh, settings, which you can find down in the bottom right. I'm not going to go into it too much. There are lots of videos out there on the settings for Tarkov or the optimum settings for Tarkov. Um, but we're just going to jump over into controls. All right. I just want people, I just want you guys at home to be aware that in the keybinds, set them up however you feel comfortable. There's a lot of mechanics in Tarkov, which is what makes it so special, I guess. But just be aware on the right hand side that you can change your keybinds to a continuous, a press, a double click, a release. So that's all for them. So that, that is a handy handy tool to know now the other thing you want to be aware of in the settings is your post effects you can filter these however you wish and it can be done in game but that sums up the only settings that i want to go through another thing i want to talk about is that you can upgrade your account in escape from tarkov to what's called the edge of darkness edition if you are finding that you're sinking a lot of hours into this game it is definitely worth it you get more starting gear i think you get better starting gear but the two main things is that you get access to your, your stash at the maximum size on the right hand side is the stash now this is everything that you it's your stash it's your inventory that you have ready to go the left hand side is what you're equipped with and that you're going to take into raid with you everything on this side if you die you will lose obviously if you survive and you extract you bring it out with you and you can put it back in your stash and and so on and so forth so the edge of darkness edition will give you the maximum size stash when you start, uh, your stash is approximately only the size of this screen-ish without scrolling. And with the Edge of Darkness edition, you get all these additional slots. Now, it might not seem like a big deal, but in the early game, when you're trying to get as much loot out as you can, it makes it very difficult. You end up playing a lot of Tetris, you have to sell things you don't want to sell, and it gets messy. When we go into the hideout, I'll show you how to upgrade your stash but the other thing it does is there is a main currency in Tarkov or there's three main currencies in Tarkov rubles euros and USD or American dollars you will save millions and millions of rubles and money is key in this game the more money you have the better stuff you can take into or generally the better stuff you can take into a raid with you the other benefit is on the left you get access to a gamma case now, normally you only get access to an alpha case, which is, I believe, only four squares. And this case allows you to keep things on you when you die. So whatever is in this case, and this case only, when you die, you will come out of the game with. However, in Tarkov, there is a system where things are found in raid and not found in raid. So things you can buy from the flea market, which I'll talk about in a second, the traders, they're not found in raid. You've purchased them. Tarkov is a looter shooter. You go in, you loot, PvP, PvE, and when you bring things out, they have this tick that says item found in raid. These items, this helps for a few various reasons. One of them is questing. The other is being able to sell the item on the flea market. Now, on the inventory system that we see here on the left, you can wear armor or you can wear an armored rig. You can't wear both. So if it's in your rig or in your pockets, you can number, I believe the default is zero, uh, one to zero. Now this is quite handy. I will talk about bleeds later on, but just be aware that you can set up a heavy bleed and a light bleed fix on one keybind. So you want to prioritize the heavy bleed. It's the most important. It'll kill you the fastest. So if you simply press four, move over and release, it will keybind it to the same button. Now what that means is when you press the button, it will attempt to heal a heavy bleed first. If there's no heavy bleed, when you release the button, it will heal a light bleed. Very handy tip. Not many people talk about this one, um, but yeah, good to know. Your two guns, your melee and your pistol are bound to the quick use down here in these four. Another thing you can do in Tarkov is tag your items in your inventory. And this will come into play a bit later on, which I will talk about as well. Which brings me to another point. If you double click on an item in your stash, it will open up another window, which usually gives you more stats, more information, more options, and especially on guns, the components that that gun is made up of. Now, if we remove the mag, you'll see it removes it from the gun. And if you right click, 
you will see an option to tag here. Now we can name this whatever we want with the corresponding color. It will pop up here and it has the title on the left up here. Now this is particularly handy for when you want to take in magazines full of certain types of ammo. Because Tarkov is uh, very intensive with their stats of their bullets and armor. For example, bullets have a penetration value, a damage value, a chance to fragment value. So if it does fragment, each fragment will do a certain amount of damage. And armors have, I believe, six classes with various penetration resistances to the bullets, etc., etc. You get the idea. It's very complicated, as well as velocities, trajectories, recoil. Very complex. Just, just know it's very complex, which is what makes this game or well, part of this game so great. Now, since we've already removed this mag, I'll show you another feature in Tarkov, which is quite handy early game, or that you may not understand, which if you right click, if you filter by item, it will take you to the market screen. This will be the places you can find this item for sale, whether it be from traders or the flea market, which you'll see up here, you have to unlock at level 15. I'm not level 15, this wipe, haven't been playing much, been distracted. Now up here you can apply various filters with the settings button. I find early game or low level, a lot of traders will barter for something but not sell it until you hit the next level. So but if you want to barter for items, just uncheck that box and it should, if there is barter items, it'll give you a list of what you can barter for. As you'll see here is an example. If we click on this box, this trader wants these items here for this specific type of gun. Another cool feature is the linked search item, which will show you every other item that that item is linked with. So for example, if we click this, it will show you all the compatible guns that that magazine will fit in. Another cool feature of the right click menu is the required search. So generally this applies in sort of a reverse way. It will show you all the items that are available for trade to do with that specific item you clicked on. So if we unfilter this here, you'll see that a magnet can be used in a barter trade for the Rotor 43 muzzle brake compensator or the Night Force scope. Simple thing a lot of people may miss is that if you're, when you're clicking and dragging an item around, if you press R by default, I believe it is, you will rotate the item. You will play a lot of Tetris in Tarkov, especially when you're looting. Now, as you can see here, I've disassembled this gun. So these are all the components that make up this specific gun. A very handy feature in Tarkov, once you unlock the workbench, which I'll talk about in a second, is that you have the ability to make presets. Now, if you, you're running customized guns or a cheap build that is a good build for what you want, I highly recommend making presets. So you'll see if we go into right click, we're going to edit preset. Uh, it gets very complicated, uh, but once you understand how it works, it's very handy. You can filter up here, but also you can choose any available part for the gun even if you don't have it unlocked yet or it's not available you can choose any part that fits on the frame of the gun as you can see here we have all the pistol handles available now i don't have these in my inventory but what this means is that when you assemble it this way or from a preset that you save you can open it up and it will show you all the presets that you've saved for this weapon now if you go up here to assemble it will tell you some of the parts that you're missing or you don't have now you can ignore it and it will assemble the gun as it is without that part or you can go to buy parts which will take you to the flea market which you can find it from traders or other players and if you just purchase all it will put it back in there and then you assemble the gun. If you have all the parts available it will be down in green here and you just hit assemble. If you go back to your stash, boom, the weapon is built and it has the custom name next to the marker too. Now I won't go into this too much but if you go up to skills you will see that you have uh, various perks or, or strengths within the game that level up as you play in raid the flea market which is available down the bottom here opens at level 15 you can use it before level 15 but it will only show traders once you're above level 15 you can trade with other players uh, for the parts that you need you can filter on the left or simply by typing in the name and now let's talk about the hideout the hideout is your out of raid base it's where you can upgrade certain nodes within the hideout since i have the edge of darkness edition for example my stash is already fully upgraded. But that's an example. If you, let's say, go into illumination here, it will show you to upgrade a level two. I need 14 bulbs and 10 wires. These will be found in raid or from trading on the flea market. And that is how you, essentially you upgrade each of the nodes in your hideout. I won't go into it, but it does get quite modernized. It gets quite extensive. You get a Bitcoin farm. You can make moonshine, 
It's a, it's, it's a way of making money and or boosting your stats or crafting items. Now this brings us to the traders in Tarkov, of which initially at starting level there is only seven. Jaeger down at the bottom right is not unlocked, he's unlocked through a simple quest. Each trader has their own reputation system, which is based of negative or positive. If you go and do quests for them, you earn positive reputation. Some quests can negatively affect other traders, but this usually balances itself out in the end. Traders in Tarkov do have a maximum of four levels. If you want to see the requirements, simply hover over the question mark. Or if you click in here, it's up in the top right. Certain traders deal in certain currencies. As you'll see down here, Peacekeeper, he deals in US dollars. Some items are restricted to how many you can buy per restock. The restock is up in the top left here around this timer. If you go into a specific trader and hit the task tab, it'll show you the active quests and the ones you have completed. One thing that's a little bit annoying in Taku is that you have to press a button that's usually here to accept the quest or to complete a quest. It will not auto take or complete. And sometimes you have to hand over items from your stash before you can complete that quest. There is one specific trader in Tarkov, Defense. He deals mainly with scav reputation. In a moment you'll see that you can play as a scav and your actions as a scav affect the reputation of the fence. The higher reputation you get with fence, the better benefits you get for your scav player. There are two playable characters in Tarkov. You can play as your PMC, which relates to everything that we talked about before in the stash and your items. Essentially customize your loadout to go in as a PMC, in which case scavs and other PMCs will be hostile. As a scav, you play as the AI characters. Your goal is to be friendly to the other scavs, otherwise you will get negative reputation if you kill them, as well as other player scavs as well. You want to be friendly to those if you can. <laughs> it doesn't always work. If a player scav is marked as hostile to the AI scavs, you can kill them without any detriment. Your scav stats are completely separate from your PMC stats. They have a different level, different capabilities. It's a random loadout every time. Your skills will level up separately to your PMC as well. When you select a PMC or a scav raid, you'll be taken to the, the map menu. This is where you can select which map you wish to go into. Some maps are not available to scavs, such as the lab. And the other ones that are not available are still in development. You can choose your time of day and it will show you the current weather conditions. There are in-game maps in Tarkov, but they are very basic. They're not detailed. I highly recommend downloading separate maps, which have a lot more detail and quest markers and, and things like that. Generally, if you're going into a night raid, you want a lighting source, but that will also attract attention to yourself. So night vision is a thing in Tarkov. You can take night vision, thermal scopes, and things like that. So if you're going to run a night raid, be prepared. So let's go with the daylight hours here. Because I have the Edge of Darkness edition, I can enable practice mode for this raid. This is not an available feature if you have the base version of the game. You can customize all the settings from the weather to the AI amount, boss enabling bosses. It's good, really good practice um, for Tarkov. You can invite other people who have the Edge of Darkness edition to your offline raid as well. Down here, if you just click the plus button, your friends list will pop up and you can add anyone who you want to. You can ensure your gear and escape from Tarkov. There are two ways to do it. One is by simply right clicking, going down to ensure, pressing OK. But if you add new components to your gun, make sure you go in and ensure them individually. The other way to do it is just before you go into a raid, you'll be given this screen. You can highlight the individual items and just press ensure. Just keep in mind that it's only a low level gear that will probably get returned to you. The second you start making better guns or you have better gear, it's probably not going to come back. All right, so now we're jumping into a raid with my friend Hammy. And we're going to run through some of the mechanics of Tarkov. Now Tarkov does have some survival mechanics to it. You open your inventory with your keybind. You see down in the bottom left here, I have hydration and energy. If they run out, you will start taking damage and you get various status effects. Down in the bottom left, you'll see a character status, which is crouching or not crouching. If you hold your keybind and scroll your mouse wheel, you can adjust the various levels of your crouch. Blue bar is uh, aim down sight stamina. So when you're aiming down sights, you, this blue bar will go down. Now this is dependent on the ergonomics of the gun, which you can see here. The higher, the better. The green bar is your normal stamina. That actions for sprinting, jumping, crouching, proning, everything, just about everything uses stamina. If you get shot with bullets, you will lose small chunks of stamina as well, which can prevent you from sprinting off from other players. What's up over there? We're joined with Hammy today. Who's uh? Who's over there? Give the friendly wiggle, the old Tarkov wiggle. 
Now, a big part in Tarkov, I guess, as well, is that your friendly players are not marked with any indicators whatsoever. So you either have to pay attention to what they're wearing. You can get coloured armbands, but in the heat of combat, it's it's difficult. So this is one of the key features of Tarkov, I guess, is what makes it difficult and unique, is that there's, it doesn't hold your hand at all. Down in the bottom left, you'll also see a speaker marker. That's how much noise you're making. If you scroll your mouse wheel, you can change your default movement speed. No bars means generally you won't be making any sound. In Tarkov, sound is everything. So you'll see here, I've got earpieces equipped. Now these vary on quality and things like that, but you want to have something in here. It helps you to hear footsteps of other players and, and noises. Everything in Tarkov makes a noise. Going into your inventory makes a noise. Aiming down sight makes a noise. And just everything. Basically, if you get heard in Tarkov, if someone hears you, it's game on. Now, it's the usual buttons for aiming and shooting. You don't need to know that, but you can change the level of zoom depending on your keybinds, and this is why I recommend setting your keybinds to however you wish. You can change the zoom level of your scopes. Yeah, we got a thumbs up from Hammy there. But if you do have a secondary sight, which can be a canted sight, um, a scope... It's an example of scabs coming when they shouldn't. So if you do have a secondary scope, depending on what you've changed your keybind to, if you press it, you will switch scopes. Now this one is attached to the same scope that I have, but it is a variation. So if, there was, if this was a canted scope off to the side, I would go from this to my scan, canted scope on the side. The icons up in the top left is your uh, player health. Now you have seven different hitboxes in Tarkov, according to the indicator in the top left. There are lots of status effects in Tarkov. I'm not going to go into them all because there is a lot. But one of the main ones you need to know is whether you're overweight or underweight, which is also indicated down here in yellow. So the yellow little eyeball looking symbol means we're overweight at the moment. Now by doing actions in Tarkov, you level everything up. All of the stats that we spoke about earlier will level in some aspect. So if you're overweight, when you're running around, sprinting, jumping, doing all those things, you will level up your strength. If you're underweight, now it's green and I don't have the status, you will level up your endurance. One of the important things to know when you first spawn into Tarkov is that everything from your previous raid will keep its status, so to speak, especially your weapons. So for example, we have a tactical light on this weapon. If I was to leave this on when I left this raid, the light will be on next raid. Same with your firing modes. So one of the important things in Tarkov, if you, especially if you're bringing a new gun into raid, make sure you're on full auto by pressing your keybind. You can cycle through your tacticals by pressing your keybinds. Usually it's a combination of two. So if you're in this instance, mine is control T. If I press in control T, you'll see it cycles through the different options. You're <laughs> The recoil plays a big part in how you engage. If you're running around and shooting, uh, or trying to shoot while walking, it will affect your aim and your recoil control and everything like that. If you activate your tactical, generally it will lessen the recoil. Now with the tactical engaged, You can see the pattern on the right is slightly tighter than the pattern on the left. Same again when you're crouching, lessens the recoil. If you hold your middle mouse wheel and move your mouse, you will do a free look, which is handy when you're sprinting around or hiding in a corner or reloading, whatever you need to. There are three types of reloads in Tarkov. Three types of reloads. You can do a normal reload. Or if you double tap the button, you would do a fast reload. But that does throw the mag on the floor. Now the third type of reload, if you hold your reload key and scroll the mouse wheel, you can select which magazine you wish to put in the gun. Now this falls back to the tagging system that we were talking about earlier. If you have a magazine that has better ammo in it, because there is better ammo, say if, for example if you're going to fight a boss or if you're engaging another player, you would probably want to switch to that magazine. As you deplete your magazines in Tarkov, you can bring spare bullets with you, which I highly recommend unless you've got a lot of magazines on you. Simply click and drag and you'll fill them up one by one. Yes, one by one. It is a skill that can be leveled up, which gets faster. Same as if you right click, unload, you can cancel the animation by doing this as well. Another important thing in Tarkov is that you will, at some point, eventually get a weapon malfunction or a weapon jam, which is usually indicated by a red flashing light in the corner of your screen. Now you have to inspect the weapon first by pressing your keybind. 
which will identify what the issue is. And that brings us to the next point of the available gun mechanics. After you've inspected your weapon, you'll have to do an action, whether that's checking the chamber or checking the mag. Now, these are all keybinds that you can set to whatever you wish. Hotkeys are amazing in this game. If you have one button, you can press to do various things. You can even go as far as removing the mag and, remo and emptying the chamber. So yeah, obviously these will all be keybind specific. Another important one is having the capability of dropping your backpack. So for example, see we are overweight here. If I was to, that restricts your movement, it slows you down, it uses more stamina, etc. Depending on, you, again, depending on the keybind that you set, it's always a good idea to drop your bag if you're going to get into a gunfight. Most people miss this, and again, it's not really a big issue because VoIP's in the game now, but if you double tap your, whatever keybind is for your voice lines, it brings up all the actions you can do. I highly recommend having your grenade as a double tap button just in case you press it. And you used to throw the grenade immediately, which used to, if you've got fat fingers like me or your unco, can cause issues. But now you prep your grenade first. But I would still recommend having it on a double tap in the event you accidentally press it. You don't want to go switching to your grenade like this when you're in the middle of a gunfight. Once you've readied your grenade, there are two ways to throw it. Overhand is left click. Underhand is right click. Most of the sites in Tarkov have zeroing capabilities. I believe the default is page up and page down. You see in the bottom right, that's how you zero your scope. You can steady your aim with a keybind. There are also keybinds for alternate movements in Tarkov as well, such as blind firing, sidestepping, and then side sideways blind firing. You've already seen us lean like this, but you can also progressively lean and it will hold there with the right keybinds. Simply press it again to go back. So as you can see in the top right corner, we do have a timer now. This is how long is left in the raid. If you stay in after that time, your character dies and you lose everything. I believe by default it's O, the letter O. If you press O, it'll bring up the timer if it's not already displayed. If you double tap O, it'll bring up a list of your available extracts which will be various points, usually around the edge of the map, not always, but I highly recommend downloading the maps, get to know your extracts. As you get to learn the game, you will see that certain items are interactable. Simply walk up to it, press whatever your keybind is. You will begin searching it. Now, this is a skill that gets faster as time, like as you progress it more, but you'll see how the searching system works. And then you can simply control left click to bring it into your inventory, or you can click and drag. So this here on the left is an example of an extract on the customs map. You run down here, simply go to the correct location. Ow! And you will see down the bottom the timer starts and you will start extracting. So in Tarkov, torches can play a big factor even during the daylight. You can barely see uh, the outline of, of Hammy here. We can barely see where his head is, which is where you want to aim for. As I mentioned before, there are several status effects in Tarkov. So now we have a light bleed. There are various healing items in Tarkov, but generally a bandage will heal a light bleed and a tourniquet will heal a heavy bleed. Now what's happened is because of our bleed and the damage we took, it takes away from your total health pool, which you can be fixed with medikits. But if you want a more in-depth health system, simply so go up to this tab, you can repeatedly use a health kit to bring all those pools back up. Now if one area of your body takes too much damage, the limb will black out, as you can see here. My left leg is completely gone. If a limb is blacked out, it has various effects on your character. So at the moment, we won't be able to sprint at all, and we walk with a hobble. So you can use a surgery kit to bring the limb back to life, but it will have a, a depleted health pool overall and less HP overall. You can heal individual body parts by clicking and dragging your medikit onto the part you wish to heal. The head and thorax are the most important. So you can see now that my left leg only has 25 HP, as opposed to what it was before, and it does reduce your total health pool. If that reaches zero, you will die. If a limb is blacked out, or a body part is blacked out, your other areas will start taking damage. So now that we've been shot in the arm, you'll see that when I'm aiming down sight, it's very shaky, and it's not stable. I'm just gonna try and break my legs. Jumping from certain heights will hurt you. Ah! So as you can see there, we've now got a black leg and a fracture. Fracture is another type of status, which can be healed with splints. But due to the black limb, now we can't sprint, and our ADS is also affected. One way to alleviate these problems is with painkillers. As here, Vaseline is a painkiller for some reason. 
or with morphine. Now we can sprint. It does have a slight visual effect, but it is it gets you out of a bind. You will take damage, though, if you sprint too much on a broken leg. Certain types of armors will protect your arms and sometimes your stomach, um, and others just protect your thorax. Alright, try and shoot me in the stomach. Yeah, one more time. Yeah, again. Alright, that's good. So in the event you do get shot in the stomach and it does get blacked out, you will start hemorrhaging water and energy. You can see the rate of depletion here in red. So whilst armor and helmets can save you from some things, it won't from others. For example, a single fragment of a single grenade, if it gets into your eye or your face area or somewhere, a vital area, you will die. Alright, shoot me in the face. Alright, so that concludes the video. It's the basic of Tarkov. It's meant to be short, sharp, and sweet. Same as usual. If you like the video, you know what to do. I'm not even going to say it. Alright. See you the next one. Peace. I'm not going to say fucking like and subscribe.